What up guys, this is Rio Gion here and here is the top three mechanical keyboards for the office. Now, as usual, there will be links to those keyboards down below for you guys to click and those are affiliate links. So if you do click them and you do buy them, I do get a small commission from them and that would really help me make more of these awesome videos. Now, without further delay, let's get on to those keyboards. For the stack, we have the DOS Keyboard Professional 4. This is a very expensive and very professional looking keyboard. Oh yeah, pun was totally intended. That would be a great asset to any office setup. When you bring this keyboard to the office, people will instantly tell that you are a serious business person. When you commit this kind of money for a keyboard, this baby comes in two different switches, the addicting Cherry MX Blue and its silent but deadly butter, the Cherry MX Brown. If you want to fly under the radar, then I would go with the Cherry MX Brown, but if you want to live fast and die young, I would suggest getting the Cherry MX Blue. Joking aside, if you bring the MX Blue, be prepared for people to file complaints. I had one before. The front plate is made of this rich aluminum texture on the keyboard. It has a strong weight to it. I haven't done drop tests on this keyboard, but I honestly think this keyboard would withstand the test of time. On the right side, you got a dedicated scroll wheel, which is nice for when you want to adjust the volume when listening to music at the office, if they allow for such a thing. There are dedicated media controls to make your music listening experience just that much more enjoyable. Personally, I really like that they included dedicated media controls because I really don't like having media Media controls being bound to the F keys like those other keyboards. For this keyboard, you only got one USB cord and you get two USB ports to plug in like your mouse, thumb drive, whatever that needs a USB port. And this is really nice because you don't need to have a USB pass through which would take up another port on your computer. Then you have this ruler which double up as a feat to raise your keyboard. Depending on how you like your keyboard position, you might never even use this ruler or you might put the ruler on the keyboard then just forgot that it was ever even there in the first place. If you want this keyboard to double up as a gaming slash office keyboard, you need macro functionality, then you're kinda out of luck with this keyboard. If you don't need macro functionality, so if you are ready to spend around $145, price is subject to change. For a professional keyboard, then this should be in your shortlist. The way to justify spending this much money on a keyboard that doesn't have LED lights nor macro functionality is that this keyboard is very reliable since there's just not that many moving parts. In theory, it should be more reliable in the long run. If you're planning to use this keyboard in the office for the long run, then this might just be worth the investment. The mid-range option is the Cooler Master Master Keys Pro L. This does not have RGB because I figured if you're gonna bring this to the office then you wouldn't want to distract other workers with RGB light unless that's your thing. I love how simple this keyboard is and just how minimalistic it is as well. If you were to bring this keyboard to the office and you don't turn on the lights, no one's gonna bat an eye. Then again, if you do want to show off your brand new mechanical keyboard, keyboard then by all means go RGB. The construction is not quite like the DOS keyboard because the frame is plastic but it's not the really cheap kind of plastic where one touch and you can instantly tell this is a cheap bulk keyboard. This keyboard comes in a variety of switches MX blue, brown, and red so you can either go loud, go silent. For those that are curious about the red switches it's a linear switch so you don't have that tactile bump from the blue or the brown and you also don't hear a sound when you type on it. To be honest, the red switches is made for people that mainly use the keyboard to play video games, so unless your typical day in the office revolves around playing video games, and if it is, I'm jealous already, then you should be looking at the brown as your best option. 
The cable is detachable which is awesome for carrying the keyboard from place to place. It's nice not to have either wrapped up the cable around the keyboard or to find extra space in your bag to carry it around. The keyboard is not as heavy as other keyboards so it would be nice on your back if you're planning to carry it around from place to place. You do get a standard layout if you plan on replacing the keycaps then you have a much easier time finding replacement keycaps in the aftermarket. During my time with this keyboard I remember the typing experience was really smooth. This was back in the days when I was still in college and I remember really enjoying the typing experience when I have to write essays. I forgot what I was writing about but I remember the experience being great when I was typing on the keyboard. For those of you that just want to get the keyboard to do office work and play video games at the same time then this is the one you should really get. The keyboard is softwareless which is something that I know people will love and you can set up macro functions. There are four onboard profiles for you to save and you can set the keyboard so that only certain keys light up. Since I play a lot of FPS on my free time, I would set up the WASD and other keys like E, R, F, Z, Q, Shift, and Control. Depending on what kind of games you play, you can set up the keyboard so that it matches your play style. In terms of features for the money, I think this is money well spent. Because you do get a premium switch, you get features that you might use if you also play video games, and you can always go for the RGB version and go all out. So if you want to save money, you can get the white one. If you don't want to save money and just go all out, have a lot of fun with RGB, go with the RGB one. The ASIO MK Hue is the cheapest of the three and it's actually one of the more popular keyboards display on my channel. This keyboard comes in three different colors, black, blue, and red, but it only has the Ultimo Brown switches, which is silent and tactile. The Ultimo switch is one of the main clone switches in the market that has similar characteristics to Cherry switches. This switch has been in the market for quite some time, since 2015 I believe. The switch is from a company called Guild, and to make a long story short, a lot of these companies are made when a patent for Cherry MX switches expires. Since this keyboard has a clone switch, it costs the company less money to make, therefore, it passes savings down to you. This keyboard looks premium and it feels almost premium. The Ultimo switches does have the same feedback as the Cherry MX Brown, but this is coming from someone that tests and reviews over hundreds of keyboards. If you're just the average consumer watching this video, then chances are it's pretty hard to tell the difference unless you stack the two side by side and really feel out the switches. Since we're talking about bringing this keyboard to the office, the best color to go with is black because then you can turn off the LED lights and the keyboard pretty much looks like any regular keyboard and no one will bat an eye. The layout is standard so if you want to replace the keycaps later on you can but the money that you're paying for the keycaps might cost as much as the keyboard itself. So how cheap is this keyboard? At the time when I'm posting this video, the keyboard is around $40 or so. If you really want something that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, you should really get this keyboard. This keyboard has the aluminum plate and floating key design. This particular floating key design is very popular with modern keyboards because it's easier to clean the keyboard than the keyboards with shells covering it. There's also a keycap puller on the back, but don't, don't use it because those plastic keycap pullers will typically scratch the sides of your keycaps. I will provide a link to a wired keycap puller below so you can pull out your keycaps without scratching them. If you're down to get this keyboard, I'll provide a link down below as well. Out of those three keyboards, which ones would you guys buy? Comment down below. Let me know. That would be so awesome. And of course, if you made it this far into the video and you haven't subscribed yet, click on the subscribe button down there. Don't forget to ring that notification bell to become part of the mighty notification squad. And of course, if you don't want to buy any of those keyboards and you want to support me anyways, man, give yourself a round of applause. You guys are super awesome. And I will provide links down to my Patreon page and my PayPal page down below. And of course, guys, stay awesome. Hey guys, this is real, and I always wanted to do that intro for as long as. <coughs> so let me know of the three keyboards, which particular ones would you guys buy in the comment section down below? I would love to see that.